What's going on, everybody? Aaron Trevini here, back down here in the beautiful state of Texas, and we are joined by Austin Linney for the second time. I'm really looking forward to this one. Austin Linney is a serial entrepreneur, real estate investor, business, and mindset coach, and he is also the host of the weekly podcast, Construct Your Life, an all-around neat guy, and honored to have him on the show tonight. How are you doing today, Austin? I'm doing good, man. It's good to see you again. You're looking, you're looking trim. You're looking fit, man. You're looking good. Okay. Chiseled. Hey, I- <laughs> yeah. Thank you. I, I appreciate the kind words. I think maybe it's uh cleaning up the die a little bit. I, I don't know what it is. <laughs> it's good, yeah. man. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. You know, I, I know a lot's changed really in the past year. I can't believe it's been what what has it been a year and a half since you know we last had you on the show. Yeah, probably so. Maybe, maybe two, but 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 yeah, it's probably been about a year and a half, give or take. So okay. yeah. Absolutely. I, uh, I I did what I could there to, to give you a little bit of an intro. Uh, I know you have a lot of real neat content out there, um, but for those who aren't too familiar with you, would you introduce yourself, please? Sure. Yeah, I'll be 40 next month. Um, I spent my younger formative years uh, selling wine, uh, working in the hotel business, working in the bar business, Um did that for many years in Nashville, Texas, all around, a lot of high-end restaurants. Um, I don't talk about it enough. Um, and I caddied a little bit and I worked in the music industry as well, too. I worked at a really nice restaurants. And when you work at really nice restaurants, you work, you, you, you meet a lot of business owners. You know, you meet a lot of high-end people, especially where I worked. And uh, whether they were Nashville recording artists or they were business people who lived on Lake Travis. And, you know, I really don't speak about that enough, but it, it's it's kind of the old adage, like my buddy likes to get people riled up these days. And he goes, you know, what's a better investment, a four-year college degree or a country club membership, right? You know, and, and so I learned a lot about business from those early, early years, you know, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. I read those books. I met these business owners. They were they were hanging out on a Tuesday at four o'clock and I was like, what do you do? You know, and you're asking them what they do. And, and, um, so that, that formed a lot of my ideas about business and everything. I got started in real estate. I started in Airbnb, you know, I battled, uh, drug addiction, which I think I covered on the previous one and alcoholism. Most of my life, I've been sober almost five years now. Um, I've got divorced. Uh, I used to work private equity. I've lost a bunch of weight. So, you know, really kind of reshifted my whole life around. And it started by buying one property that turned into two properties, turned into three properties, and turned into an Airbnb company that we launched across the US. Um, I have since, you know, shifted our focus right now. We're we're remodeling a, a seven bedroom, six bath house in the Smoky Mountains with my partners. Uh, we did a full gut. I mean, we're adding a rock wall, we're adding like everything, like massive patio, and we're gonna sell that. And so what we're trying to do with that is we're trying to create a brand. When's the last time you ever had a property developed by a a guy that's been in Airbnb for like seven years, you know, that understands every aspect of the property. I'm not just some developer. And so we're looking at the property and saying, you know, how can we make this just a turnkey business for somebody with the standard of design and the level of, of thought that's going in there? And we're really trying to create something. This is our first project together. The designer is amazing. She gets it. She's a project manager. I, I I literally forget that we have the home sometimes because that's how great she is. Um, so that'll be done in about three weeks. But I'm 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 headed into this season of my life um, that I I'm the most excited about I've, I've ever been. I've kind of found my 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 thing, uh, and I and I've thought about it for years. I I worked it a little bit, but not in the aspect that I am. But we're in the process uh, in about 60 to 70 days, we'll have bought our first business. Uh, And then we have another one lined up right behind it. Uh, And if you would have asked me a month ago, if I would be in the HVAC electric plumbing space, I I wouldn't, I wouldn't have said yes. Uh, But I knew that we wanted to buy businesses because my big thing is impact. And what better way than to own businesses that have jobs, right? And, and so we're, we're really fired up about that. We're, we're launching a fund on the backside of that for hard money, for development. So we're doing multiple things in the, in the business and real estate space is where we're headed uh, with my partners. Absolutely. And, you know, one word that I thought was interesting to use was, was impact, right? So if you're leaving some sort of impact or making some sort of impact, you know, for you as a businessman, Austin, what, what does the word impact mean to you? 
it only means one thing and, and I'm, I'm actually going to create a shirt so if anybody steals it i see you in the airport it's, it's over but i'm literally going to create the name of our company and i'm on the back it's going to say we create jobs like it's jobs to me and as i've flown up there to the business we're buying i've met with the new ceo i'm i'm interviewing the the, the higher ceo that's going to run the national brand while we roll up companies a lot of people that listen to your podcast are very inspiring. They're very driven. They're, you know, they, they want to scale. They want a thousand units. They want, you know, they want all the things, right? But what we forget is there's people that just want to be a dad and they want a good job and they want to be with their kids and they want to go to soccer practice. And those are the people I want to give a job to. And I want to be a boss that you know, this is number one is so funny because we sat down with the, with the vice president and the owner who's owned the company for, I mean, he's been in the space for 40 plus years. And I asked the guys the first time I met him, I said, hey, you know, what is your dream outside of this job? And I had to ask him four times because his boss, you know, the owner of the company is sitting right there and he didn't want to answer. And I was like, look, he's OK with whatever you say, I promise you. Right. And the guy was like, well, I would really love to own airbnbs around the country and i just smiled because i was like little do you know that you have me who's just like done this for years and he was so excited to see something because our job can be the thing that makes us money but there are other things that we care about too and so pouring into these people and um I, to be honest with you uh, i already felt this way but this owner that we're buying the company from really did it to me when he was telling me stories about owner financing employees houses that couldn't get approved when he was talking about paying for their kids' medical expenses. Like, I'm like, this is the man that I want to be at, at 65 years old. And so if my dream is to create impact at scale, this is the only way I know how, right? And, and then we also, to, to take it nine layers deeper, um, and this is where I kind of get on my high horse, is if you look at America and you look at what we've done to trade jobs, right? If you look at what we've bastardized and said about them and look down upon them, like, does anybody know? This is my joke that I'm going around right now. Does anybody know what an HVAC tech in, in Pittsburgh makes per hour? Like, take a guess. HVAC tech, so someone just starting out in the HVAC business? Yeah, somebody, somebody HVAC tech, they have a couple, maybe they have a couple years, they went to six months of school. That's it. Uh, 30 bucks an hour? They're making 45 to 65 bucks an hour. Wow. And so what, what I don't understand is that's a damn good job. And it didn't take that much school. So why is this looked down upon, right? Like, why are we not? And then we have another thing we're doing. We're saying, you come work for us for four years. You learn how we do it. You learn our standards and our values. And you want to go move to Nashville and you want to open a branch. We'll fund it. We'll support you. We'll give you the systems. We'll be part owners. Go. This is great. And so now we're creating this thing where now I'm speaking at the trade school when I'm up there in two weeks. Now I'm going to speak at high schools. Now I'm looking at military. Now I'm looking at single moms. How can we get them in the space? See, now we're like, my mind is just like, okay, now we're attacking like true core societal issues that, that only can exist if I'm a business owner in the community. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's interesting. We're in a very interesting time as well, where it seems like really in the past few years, um, we're kind of having a, a new conversation about not only doing business, but also doing business in a way that leaves some sort of social impact. Do you kind of feel uh, amongst your entrepreneurial community, other people are following suit or uh, along there with you? Yeah, I mean, I actually think, you know, uh, somebody asked me on a podcast a couple of weeks ago, because I coach two segments of group uh, of people. I coach 24 year olds to 28 year olds that have made some money and they're ready to go to the next level or I coach 40 and up and they've made tons of money and they're not fulfilled. And he asked me, he said, what is the thing that impressed you the most about the young age, the young, younger group that people aren't talking about? And I said, no longer are people comfortable with just making a hundred plus grand and not being fulfilled. Yeah. It's not going to happen anymore. They'll toss it away. I mean, I've got multiple guys that I coach that make over 150, 250 grand and they're going, this can't be it. And so that thing that we said, it was the thing. It's not okay anymore. And you know what? Nobody's ever asked me that's come to work with me ever. They've never asked me. 
What am I making? They've never asked me. That's like the sixth question they asked me. No, what are we doing? Who are we helping? What can we get behind, right? And what's crazy to me is this, this team that I've created, this like what I'm calling the Navy SEALs of like my partners is all people that were my mentors that are so excited about the, the damn vision and the journey that now they're partners. They're not even mentors anymore. They're in the business with me. Like we're talking 20 years in hedge funds, you know, 20 years in this space, like really have lived their life, kind of made some money. And now they're ready to like do the, the legacy play and, and super excited about that. And we're, we're in the process of also getting into mergers and acquisitions. We're launching one of those companies because I believe that business owners are not being treated properly when they go to sell their business. And, uh, and so there's so many different things I want to get to. And, and, and when people hear all this about me. They're like, oh my God, I don't know how you do so much. I don't like, I feel like I'm not doing anything right now. Right. Um, but, but, but people need to understand that there's businesses that make money and there's businesses that I do because they're impactful and, and you can have both, but you can also have everything. And so my buddy, uh, one of my good friends wrote yesterday, have you actually bought a bad investment or have you, have you judged it on the prop, the wrong timeline? Uh, you know, and that's the truth, right? Have you actually not gotten anything out of that years of learning or, or not, or have you, have you judged it too soon? Right. And so my joke with my clients is, is super simple and I'll do it. I'll do it to you, Aaron. If I gave you 30 years as you are today, could you be a millionaire? Of course. Okay. okay. So you're already a millionaire that's off the table. So we can't use it as a goal anymore. So who do you want to be? Uh, and they go, oh, well, that changes everything. Yeah, okay. Because it's the only thing that actually matters. Mm. You know, uh, when I buy this business, I'll be a millionaire. Who gives a shit? Like, it doesn't matter. Those 18 people, the company I'm buying and the four more I've got to hire, you think they care if I'm a millionaire? No. They care if they're taken care of. They care if they're, they're they have health insurance. Okay, like, like we become this, um, where we come to is really an arm race for people. That's where we come to. Right. And, and so who are you as a boss? Who are you as a manager? Who are you as a guy that runs a company? Who are you as a person? Do you, do you, um, when you walk up to somebody, do you say like, Hey, how are you? And like, do you really mean it? And do you say like, no, no, no. Like, are you doing okay? Like, you know, I got three guys, whether they're former clients or clients now that are going through divorce right now, mm. right? These aren't, these aren't my clients now, but they call me. They say, hey, man, can I talk? You know, and like, that's, that's what you hope, right? Because, because we have an opportunity, whether it be the grocery clerk or the coffee person, the barista, like, hey, are you doing okay? Like, is everything good? Is there anything, you know? And I know it's, it's like this, it might seem like this offhanded, like small thing, but it's, it's something right. And, and so that's how you start the little seed, whether it be in your community or at scale, that those are those little things that you can do every day. Absolutely. And, and, you know, it can be very difficult for people to, to, to kind of do that and reach out, right? Maybe you see someone, you know, with a big frown on their face, you can clearly see someone's having a hard day. Hey, I don't want to bother that guy, but I guess kind of what you're suggesting is even just saying hello and asking how he's doing that could make a big difference. I had, I had an epiphany today. I had, I had, uh, I have three new clients today. So I graduated some clients and I had a new group of clients come in today. And my clients have done stuff that are better than like, I mean, they, they, in their career, they've done stuff. It's like, geez, you, like real, this is amazing. And what I realized is like, they won't give themselves the credit. And yeah, they're hiring me for my strategic coaching and my mindset building and my business consulting and my network. Yeah, they're hiring me for all this stuff. But really what they're hiring me for is for somebody to say like, hey man, fuck yeah, dude. Like you're doing great. Yeah. Like I know it sounds ridiculous, but like as, and I'm using men on purpose. If you're 35 and older, like look around and count how many men you can really talk to and that supports you with no bias and no like support, you know, like doesn't need anything from you. Mm. Like we don't have that many. And so for me, and when I've been in a mastermind or I've been in 
uh, a coaching situation or a consulting situation with other people, having somebody there, like even me, right? Like, hey, man, you got sober, you lost 70 pounds, you you did this, you did da. I know I haven't done anything. Well, like, if you write it down, like, that's a lot, you know? And so like, even, even, even the person has to be like shaken out of it, right? And so, and so we just have to check with ourselves. And I think the book that summed it up for me, I think it was the book I was looking for, for like three or four years, uh, The Gap in the Game by Benjamin Hardy, um, who wrote it with the thought process of Dan Sullivan, who's like the guy I study more than anybody, uh, 45 years in coaching business people. Uh, he's written a bunch of books that are like a dollar on Kindle. They're amazing. They're easy to read. They're a hundred pages. Um, and he's the guy that wrote who, not how same, same, all that same kind of stuff, uh, really just talked about, you know, uh, and atomic habits, like leans into this too, like position thinking versus trajectory thinking. So meaning position is how much money do I have in my bank account? What weight am I, what car am I driving? Like, where do I live? Like, these are all the position things like that's going to get you depressed. But if you think to yourself, like the money's getting bigger. The podcast downloads are going up into the right. I feel better every day, 1% every day. Like that's, as long as that, you know, I tell everybody the same story. So I've had the podcast for almost, it would be three years in April next year. I've done like, I've already done like 470 podcasts, maybe more, like maybe 500. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, And I didn't look at the podcast numbers for the first year and a half. And the reason is, is because I knew emotionally I couldn't handle it because like, I just wanted to put out content. And so like three months in, I couldn't take it anymore. And like, I was like, man, you got to tell me my podcast producer. And he's like, no, you told me not to. You said, you said you would kill me if I told you. And so he said, look, it's going up and to the right. Does that, is that all that matters? And I was like, yeah, it does. And so if you look at my chart, now you can go out three years. It's like, this is how it's gone like the whole time. And so like at the, at the question is, is, you have to ask yourself, are you going up and to the right? And as long as you're doing that, you're, you're good. And the only thing that's getting us not to where we want to be is the, the ridiculous timeline that we put on ourselves. Yeah. You know, like I have a client who's work, waiting on a $25,000 commission, right? He left his job uh, seven months ago, like $25,000 commission check. His whole salary last year was 50 grand. I'm like, what does it mean to you to, to like make half your salary in one check that you probably worked on for like eight hours or like 10 hours? I don't know how long. You know, and he's like, well, it means everything. I'm like, well, there you go. Like, so do you need to like, so if you made, if you made 51 grand, but you got to, you know, spend time with your wife and you didn't have to work 80 hours a week and you got to go to the gym when you wanted to, like, what's the value of entrepreneurship? Well, it's everything, but we're so judging that like those numbers mean everything to us when it really means nothing. Yeah. And, and I think I'm not sure if it's maybe kind of the, the maybe the culture or the, the way we're brought up or the schooling, but it's almost like if what you're actually physically doing isn't measured, measured by percentages or charts or graphs or some, something that's, you know, quantifiable, right? Like I, I did X, Y, and Z to get me somewhere else people have a hard time grasping, you know, just going up and to the right. Mm -hmm. And a hundred percent. I think, I think that one of the tactics that I use is like, there's, there's anchor habits and then there's, there's, there's action habits on the back of the anchor habits. Okay. And let me break it down to you as simple as I need. So if it, it, so let's say you, you want to make, there's, there's like three trains of like thought process in here. So let me just throw the third one in there and, and I'll work it all through called plateau thinking. So what I mean by that is like, let's say that you want to do uh, 30,000 a month in passive income. Let's just say, right, that's your goal. Well, I don't care about 30,000 right now. I want to get to 10,000. Why do you want to get to 10,000? Because when we get to 10,000, we might not even want to go to 30,000. We don't even know yet. And so let's get to the first marker. Let's stand around. Let's look. Let's think, okay, where do I want to? It's like, I want 100 Airbnbs. Oh, hold on. Like, let's get five. And then let's see if you want another, you know, 95 after that, right? And so what we have to do is we have to say, okay, I want 10,000 a month in passive income. Now, what are the three action items per week that I can do that if I did at a high enough volume, 
I'm going to create the mechanism to make 10K, whether that's a sales guy or a rep or your insurance or whatever it is. You know the habits that you should do. What we do is we overthink the whole thing and we add 30 things we should do in a week instead of lead drivers, which are like probably like, you know, three. what is the, what is the quote with Warren Buffett? He said, take the 10 most important things you need to do and then cross out the bottom seven because they don't matter. Like that, like that's the game. It's like we've just over over you know complexed everything with our life and it's like what are the three major things that you can do like do those in, in and day out and you have to say like if i do this at enough volume i'm bound to crack it like that's it that's the game you know like do you want do you want to be do you want you know do you want to reach a certain weight or do you want to be healthy like there's two different, totally different things. And if you're being healthy and you're creating a healthy lifestyle, then that's a forever game. It's not a game that's going to finish anytime soon. And so when you start changing the way that you think and changing the perspective, you're creating a different mechanism of, of attaching yourself to it and understanding there's nowhere to get. Yeah. And, you know, you know, you talking about weight really kind of resonated with me as well, because, you know, at, at least the past few years, um, you know, at times kind of had difficulty sleeping, you know, with the stress and work and, you know, while trying to stay in the gym. And if anything, my weight has stayed the exact same, but I physically feel better because I'm making more of an effort to, you know, kind of decompress, relax, try to sleep a little bit better, maybe eating a little bit better food. So it's interesting how you're talking about kind of measuring it, you know, in the way so this is my favorite. This is my favorite story I've ever heard in my life. This changed my life. So there's this guy named Kyle Cease. He's a used to be a comedian and an actor, and now he's in personal development. Um, he says uh, he says he did a three day juice cleanse, and he gained weight, and so he took the the scale and he fucking threw it up against the wall, and he was like, "What the fuck? Like, how could I possibly gain weight?" And he said, "Wait, wait, wait, hold on." He goes, "What? What was the reason I did the juice cleanse? Well, the reason was to feel good. Okay, I didn't say." a pound i didn't say a pound or a weight it was to feel good and he goes that was the day that i stopped measuring off of numbers ever and and at the end of the day like here here's what i can tell for anybody that's listening out there that's doubting how good they're doing i've probably hosted 600 podcasts i've probably been on about another 400 i've probably coached you know 15 people a week for almost four years straight I, I i'm on you know 45 to 50 meetings a week i've talked to billionaires millionaires i've talked to everybody uh everybody's not doing as good as you think they're doing okay <laughs> that's the first thing and then everybody's not doing as bad as they you think they're doing either it's somewhere in the middle and they're dealing with maybe you know somebody stole a bunch of money i had a friend that just lost 500 grand on a real estate deal like but you're seeing the Instagram and you're seeing this and you're seeing that. And that's why I'm such a weird guy when I'm like, hey, yeah, drug addict, alcoholic, divorced, homeless. Nice to meet you. Because I just don't like what's the point here. Right. And so when you can wake up and you can realize that you're just everybody that's listening to this is just as great as everybody else. Maybe they got started a little earlier. Maybe they had a little more help. But whatever you're doing just keep doing it. And then, and then moreover, whatever your goals are or dreams, double them, double them. This is the first thing I do with clients. Like whatever your goal is, we're going to do it. We're going to do it 10 times bigger and two times and about five times faster. And well, what's the point that scares the shit out of me? Well, first of all, that's the point. The second thing is, is you're going to be pulled so fast and so far that uh, you're going to go, oh, well, I didn't hit those goals, but I got so much farther than I thought. And and so whatever that is, whatever it is, just just create the momentum to say, I think I, think I can. And so if I did this, what would it look like, right? A uh, perfect example is a client I have. He wanted to set his goal at like, uh, for a sales job, he wanted to set his goals like two, two, one or something like two, two, one, one million. And I, I like peppered him for like five days. Like I was like, is this the, I just want to double check before we lock it in. Like, is this the, is this the goal? 
And finally it came out and he was like, well, I mean, he's like, the bosses told me if I did like 4 million, like they would give me like a $200,000 bonus. And I was like, so how the fuck is it ethical? And he was like, well, I mean, that's a lot. And, and I said, okay, great, but let's just make it the goal. Let's, uh, I'm crazy. Let's make it. And so I want to say he's going to finish out this year with like 4.5 million. And it's like, if we didn't even do that, and now he's building his first house and like all this stuff. And I'm like, I'm like, dude, you just had one Airbnb a minute ago. And now you're building the house. You got married. You did. And he's like, I know, like, this is crazy. And like, he's a young kid. And so like, I'm like, yeah, because when the mind creates something and it accomplishes or move towards it, there's no going back. There's no going back. When you do a hundred unit deal or a 30 unit deal, there's no going back. You're like, man, I can do this. Right. And I'm sure you felt the same way when you started a podcast, you were like, man, this is crazy. How am I going to get guests? How am I going to get one follower? You know, and, and, and what, but what you've done, what I've solved from you, pardon me, is you've been so consistent about doing it no matter what. Right. And I would imagine over time, it's opened up a lot of relationships for you and a lot of things. So, so whether you were doing it for other people or whether you were doing it for selfishly, you win both ways. And that's where people need to look at when they start things. This is not really about the ultimate goal. It's just what it, you know, what it creates for you. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, uh, th that's a great uh, example with, with, with the podcasting as well, because, you know, at least starting out from the jump, you know, it's, it can be tough, right? Like, like you said, even finding those guests, you know, who am I to even host a show, you know, I don't, you know, I don't know what I'm doing, whatever thoughts are going through your head. And kind of on that note, it can be very difficult for somebody, whether they're maybe they're in a nine to five, they're not satisfied with, maybe they are satisfied with their job. And, you know, that's, that's cool. That's good for them. They have some money that they want to deploy and they don't know where to use it. It can be very scary for people to even take that first step. How do you, you know, how do you even take that first step into, you know, something like the short term rental business or, you know, really investing in general? So what's interesting is I'm I'm extremely uh, contrarian with a lot of the things I use, right? And my joke right now is like, <clears throat> I own multiple businesses and I couldn't finance a canoe right now, you know? And so buddy's so quick, so quick to leave their W-2 when it's the one thing that gets in properties, right? And so all I'm asking for you, this is how you start. And this is how you never can go back to your W-2. I'm not saying you're going to quit right away, but this is how you can never go back. Make a dollar. I didn't say two. I said one dollar outside of your job that your boss doesn't control. Nobody else controls. You created that dollar. So if that's buying a $5 thing on Amazon and selling it for $10, if that's doing your first wholesale deal, if that's, if that's buying your first Airbnb and setting it up, make that one dollar outside and that power from that moment will be the thing that propels you. Right. And, and what, what, what you're not realizing is let's say that you're miserable at your job, like fucking, like you're like, I'm so over this. It's I'm done. What's going to happen is you're going to start doing something outside of work. That's going to unlock the creativity that you haven't had. That's going to make you feel alive. And then it's going to make your job more utilitarian than something that's dragging you down in the mud. And what I mean by that is the moment I started Airbnb and outside of my bartending job, I go, wait, bartending is nothing more than for me to buy more Airbnbs. And I didn't even care about work. I was walking in whistling. And this is a job I wanted to leave for like seven years. I was like, doo, 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 doo. like I'm going to go make my 300 bucks tonight and I'm going to go dump it in another Airbnb. And that's going to get me this and this and this. And when you start doing something outside of that, it's called the 80-20 rule. Right. A lot of people know it, but you work on something that's 20% yours. And until you can build the 20% bigger than the 80%, you can't leave your job. Right. And so when you start doing that, it starts balancing out. You start working and you start doing all these things. Right. And it's, it's just so impressive to see what blows me away is if you're sitting here and you're listening to this, which I'd imagine is on YouTube or on a podcast, and you're telling me. There's not information. That's on you, bro. I mean, the amount of information that's available, these 13-year-olds that I'm meeting these days that have businesses, 
like my friend just did uh you know grant cardone's uh real estate show yeah right and his 13 year old daughter is like one of the judges and she said she was the most succinct 13 year old i've ever listened to in my entire life like like these these guys are meeting the 18 they have like three businesses already like the information is there you're not willing to take the time to put in the work to learn the stuff it's all available and so you just have to make it. And the thing is, is it doesn't have to be the thing that propels you out of the job, but it could relieve the stress. Meaning it could make you the extra thousand bucks, the 500, the 2000 bucks. It could go on another vehement vacation and start there. Get comfortable with that. And then over time, that's going to just build, 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 build. And that's going to create that step where you can step off. You don't have to burn the boat. You can, but you don't have to really. And I think we've we, with technology and what we have created, you know, it's never been easier to start a business. It's never been easier to do other stuff. You just have to, you just have to do it. Absolutely. And I think maybe it's kind of the, I, I don't know if it's internet culture or the memes or whatever it is, it's kind of become the trendy thing to, you know, really burn the boats. And I, I think that's great if you're comfortable doing that, but you know, I, it sounds like what you're saying is there's not a one size fits all. You don't absolutely have to do that. Yeah, and, and 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 you know it depends on so many things. If you're 35 and you have three kids and you have a mortgage, like that's, I I wouldn't suggest that unless you have a ton of money saved, right? But if you're 24 and you have nothing to lose and you live at your mom's house, like do whatever you want. Like I don't travel to Europe. It doesn't matter, right? But 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 understand that you never lose. You only gain knowledge, and everything at the end of the day in the beginning is just practice anyway. And so don't take it so seriously. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. I mean, I could sit here for the next 30 minutes on this podcast and tell you about the the 45 failures I've had in business or this, that, and the other with a client. Like that's the only way. One of the one of the greatest things I heard like last week was like, he's like, I heard that um that nine out of 10 businesses fail. So I figured I would just start 10 businesses and one would work. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. I love that one. That's so good. That's neat. I guess speaking of, you know, starting businesses, maybe, you know, maybe if you fail, maybe if you really hit and, and they're a big, a big success. Um, I'm curious as well. I know that you do uh, a lot of, you know, like you said, a lot of the coaching, a lot of the short-term rentals, but you know, out of any part of the business, you could be in anything, you know, you want in the business. What speaks to you about short-term rentals? What is special about short-term rentals in particular? So my Number one obsession is to travel. Um, it's in my blood. I can't help it. I, like I need to be moving. Uh, I like the space to think. I like to shake people's hands. I like to be at my projects. I like. I like to. You know. I like to really feel it and know what I'm dealing with because um, I just. I that's just my personality. And so um, it's a lifestyle thing for me. Um, I have scaled back our operations a bunch over the years because I just don't have the bandwidth to, you know, roll out a, a co-hosting company or anything like that. Um, but if, but, it, but I've never found uh, a more profitable way. And let's just use, for instance, let's say you wanted three properties and you wanted one in the Smokies, one in Florida and one in Texas. I've never found a better way. And you spent three months at each property. I've never found a better way to be able to own that property free and clear and travel and enjoy it yourself then airbnb it just doesn't exist and so i think it can really create the lifestyle that you're looking for and you don't need five or six you don't need seven you don't you just need two or three that's it and that property uh funny enough i i just saw before i jumped on uh, my buddy who's been pretty heavy in airbnb he's a good friend uh, about two years um there's this new trend out there called uh midterm rentals and through nursing and a bunch of other things. And so he actually signed up with an insurance broker uh, and they just got a five month booking for 40K. And so he's going to net five, five, five hundred, uh, five thousand $5,000 per month. They don't have to clean it. They don't have to do anything. He's going to net that for four months. And it's like, wh where are you going to find that? You're not, right? It's, it's a single family home. Where are you, you going to find that? And so now he can, you know, go buy another property with that, with that extra money, right? Or you can do it. And so it can happen really quickly, but you have to understand the fundamentals of the game. And so what I suggest is like, when you're getting started in Airbnb, like just go buy where you like to go travel. 
like where you know where it is to eat or you know and like that way you you have that understanding of like hey the the guest comes in like oh man you got to go to the coffee shop down the corner and that's just gonna the first airbnb is to get you comfortable with hosting people in a home which is basically like a hotel that's all you're doing because the cadence of meeting them the cleaners the maintenance guys like and then if you feel comfortable, then you can go to your next one, your next one, your next one. I mean, we've done multiple hotels. We've done like, that's a whole different game, you know, like 25 rooms. It's a whole thing. Like I've done all the different kinds. And so it's just understanding the game. And, you know, I mean, I can't tell you how many stories I met where, oh, my wife doesn't work anymore because we do Airbnb now. And then I'm quitting in, in two years when we get here. And so it can happen just like that. It really doesn't take that much. Absolutely. And that's a great, that's a great point to make as well as it may be different facets of real estate, right? If you were, I don't know, buying raw land or maybe doing construction, those are great businesses. But at the same time, you're, you know, subjected, you you have to be on site, you have to be there. Whereas with Airbnb, I mean, you know, you, you're working on 27, is it 27 different states or 27? Yeah, we did back in the day, we had, we had 20, we had 27 properties in seven states. Um, I didn't walk. I think I walked in like five of them. So that was it. I never saw the inside of the other ones. Wow. Can you, that, that's interesting as well. Could you also kind of speak on that? Because maybe, you know, uh, you know, I'm here in Houston and a lot of people in Houston, they want to be hands-on with their rental properties. Right. And they want to, you know, be this is a, actually going to be very interesting. Yeah. And this is where people get uh, feisty with me. <laughs> your need for your property, especially Airbnb to be near you is a crutch. Mm. it's for your own anxiety if you truly want to be an airbnb operator do it out of state because it's going to force you to operate your business as an owner instead of a worker um, and you have to you have to learn you have to lean you have to understand words you have to look at pictures you have to learn how to leverage people you have to learn how to leverage opportunities problems mm. dude i have a true story i have a buddy Crazy background like Mike. Started a company. He was a uh, he was a stock boy. Started this trucking company. And then in three years, grew to $7.5 million. Like, seriously, crazy. He was living in California. He moved his entire family to Dallas because he could not talk himself into getting out of his day-to-day -day of his business. Like, he moved across the country with his family to literally pull himself out of the business and teach himself. And you know what? He's bought two more trucking companies since then. Like, sometimes we're our own worst enemy. And I can't tell you the amount of nights that I crawled through the back window when they locked themselves out at 1030 in the morning. I can't tell you the amount of time that I didn't call the maintenance guy and I did the work. I can't cut the amount of time that I was the cleaner. Right? And then I realized I was making $2.15 an hour. Like, you can't scale when you always lean on you being the guy to do it. We're hiring a CEO on the national brand of the HVAC company before we need him. Why are we doing that? Because I'm not the worker. Could I be the CEO? Of course, but I'm the owner. And I can't go buy more companies if I'm in there getting lost in the day to day. And so I get that. And I totally respect that. And I'm sure it's been great for you. But if you truly want to be an investor and you want to be an owner, you got to do it away from you. You got to teach yourself, right? And then also on a positive note, you can enjoy that second home loan at 10%. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Now, and that's, uh, that's, that, that, that's interesting as well. You, you made a great comparison kind of talking about that, that, you know, you're operating out of, out of a sense of fear, almost a sense of anxiety, you know, feeling like you're in control of your properties when, you know, at the end of the day, it's just making you, uh, subject to your, you know, to your property. It's, it's almost like the, the property owns you. Mm -hmm. uh, I was in a car with some friends and I had a client who I helped a lot, who was buying like a $1.5 million property on a, on a mountain in Colorado. I ran the numbers for my phone. I said, you're overpaying. I don't feel confident about, you know, the numbers that you're seeing. I said, but if you get it at this price, it works. He said, do you have a cleaner in the area? I said, no. Do you have a maintenance guy in the area? No. So give me 24 hours, I get one. And I got off the phone and she goes, dude, what the hell? She goes, you have no idea where that city is. You have no idea. You never, like you saw photos of a picture and you ran some numbers. Like, 
what? what? And I was like, well, I've done it for seven years. Like I, I'll call off. I know where to look for cleaners. I'll find somebody. I'll talk to another investor in the area. We'll find like, it's okay. Like it's not a big deal, but that's only happened because I've dude, that's only happened because I was getting 125 messages a day. I was dealing with it. I've been through all the wars. We've been, I've been across the country. I've flown to different properties. We launched, we launched seven properties in five states or parts, pardon me. We launched seven properties in three states in five days. That was, I cried like a lot. Like that was a nightmare. And I was building the listings. Oh, and so wow. we were launching it as a company and it was, it was wild. It was a wild time, but I, I learned so much and, and uh, I've done hotels and I've done all that. And, and so, you know, for me to truly create where I'm going, where, where the impact that I see for myself, the wealth I want to create for myself and others, um, I have to remove myself from the limelight. Meaning it has to be other people have to take, it's, I'm still me, but it's going to take way more of me like meaning a CEO, a CFO, a chief marketing. We're going to need a CEO for the mergers and acquisition. We're going to need a CEO, a chief marketing. Like when my 20s, I wanted all the credit. I wanted to be the guy on the podium. I wanted all that stuff. But if you truly want to create impact at scale, you've got to fade into the background, right? And, and it takes a long time. I find myself more reluctant to ever to take the, uh, to take the credit, right? Um, there's a book I'm reading right now and I, it took way too long to read it. Um, it's called good to great by Jim Collins. And they did like a five-year study on like the top companies in the world. And he found out he did a comparison company and the top companies just like outperformed the S and P by like 20%, so much. And he said, they found out when they hired the celebrity CEOs, the big names, the, the geniuses, the, all that stuff, they failed every time. Because they weren't, they didn't have a staff underneath them. They didn't support. They, when they hired the quiet, calm guy, the stoic person, that person was still fierce as ever. But they call it the mirror in the window. When things were going really bad, they looked in the mirror. When things were going great as a company, they looked out the window and thanked their employees. And so I'm realizing that that stoicism and, 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 and being calm and understanding where we're going. And, you know, we have a 50 year business plan and, and understanding, you know, what I see this going, like the only reason why we're building out this massive company, the only reason and I'll tell everybody till I'm blue in the face is because we want to launch an entrepreneurship school in 10 years. And, and the only way to do that is to have a ton of money. <laughs> you know, and if so, if you're a marketing director, if you're, if your kid wants to learn marketing, it's going to learn from a guy who owns a marketing company. If your kid wants to learn development, he's going to learn from a guy who's a developer, like not some, you know, person in a boardroom who, who has a teaching degree, who's never done anything with their life because, you know, that's, that's, that, that's the way you need to learn. And so everybody in the company has the same vision and we want to do that. And so, so um, I tell everybody when I sit down with, with them and I'm, I'm, you know, we're negotiating their company. I don't need to do this. I don't need to do this. I make six figures working, you know, four days a month. I, I don't need to do this. This is, and when you realize that is that you can create whatever it is that you want in your own reality and, and, and say, it's a choice. Like, this is the choice I choose. And some days it doesn't feel like my choice sometimes, but ultimately I know that it, that it is. And, and the schedule and, you know, like you asking me to do this is like a, it's a hell yes, because you're a great guy and, and you've always been, you know, nice. And we've had a great conversation, you know, somebody that's trying to get something out of me or something. I, I, no, I don't have to do that. And, and, but it's taken a long time to get there to not have to appease everybody because also, right. One of the greatest quotes and the greatest things I ever heard in my entire life. And it's something I share almost weekly on our meetings. The only way to truly create something of massive impact is that your vision has to be big enough for other people to fit inside. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people in their companies, their vision is only for themselves. Because I can't wait till that young tech 
that's like 21 is like CEO of the company in like 10 years. Like that's going to be like the, and he owns like a part of it, right? That's going to be like, that story is so cool, right? And so when I help a lot of people sometimes, they're always like, why are you doing this? Like, you know, they're like, so, you know, and it's like, just because people help me out, you know, like people help me out and, and it's been a wild road and, and, and you just want to help. And, and so if you would, if you're ever going through something, or you're like really down, flip it around and say, who can I help today? And in that moment, you might actually help yourself more than you think. Yeah, absolutely. And that's a, that's, that's a great message for people to hear, especially, you know, um, you know, what's been going on the past few years, you know, there's kind of been a big shakeup in the economy, kind of in uh, the way that people view work, the way that people, you know, view business, right? Maybe I'm making six figures, but I'm unfulfilled, whatever it may be. Um, and, you know, that that's a great way to reframe things about, you know, helping others and then in, in turn also helping yourself. Yeah, 100%. Absolutely. Also, well, is, you know, is there anything you haven't said that you'd really just love to hit home for us? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, I, I think we're headed into an interesting time. I think that the market is the weirdest I've ever seen it. Um, I call it the Mexican drunk standoff right now. Um, the 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 buyers are still drunk from COVID and the sellers or no pardon me the sellers are still drunk from COVID and the buyers been in the fight with Mike Tyson and they're kind of over it and they're saying now we got some leverage right I've seen homes drop almost 700 grand in the Smokies in, in the span of like 35 days they had them overpriced anyway so so what I tell everybody is every day that you wait it might be good for you and so Remember that the opportunity when the market takes a breath is not an opportunity just to sit around and go get drunk. It's an opportunity to learn, take stock of where you've been for the year, take stock of what you're going to do for next year, and and then and then dream a little bigger than you dream right now, and then you have no idea what you could create, right? And and one of my favorite quotes is sometimes all the growth doesn't happen above the ground, mm -hmm. right? And so maybe this year was just to teach you to be better at what you were doing. And maybe you didn't see it in your bank account, but trust me, the work you've been putting in is there. And so just believe in that kind of next, that next step. Um, and then, you know, get yourself around people doing the stuff that you want to do. I mean, I think that is, there's nothing in this world that can create momentum more than that. Is just is just to be listening to books, whether they be in person or just in person and podcast. Just just invest in yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Well, well said, and I think really the you know kind of the, the the takeaway from that is you know really just invest in yourself, right, and kind of reframing things to more of a more of a positive light. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely awesome. You know, well, you know, it's been great chatting with you a bit about you know a bit about your background, obviously your journey, um, a lot of your mindset, and then also the short term rental business. Um, for, you know, those of us who are, you know, down in, in the state of Texas, maybe we're in the Smokies, out of state, wherever we may be, how can we connect with you? Yeah, you can hit me up on Instagram, uh, Austin Linney, L-I-N-E-Y, shoot me a DM. Uh, you can hit me up at austinlinney.com uh, or you can, you know, shoot me an email at A-J-L-I-N-N-E-Y at gmail.com. Happy to answer any questions uh, or any give any uh, suggestions. Uh, but I can't thank you enough, man, for the opportunity. Thank you so much. Absolutely awesome. It, it's always a pleasure. And we'll, we'll talk to you later. Thanks.